I started driving for Lyft to try to take some ownership of my life. I wasn't finding any work in San Diego. Nothing in my field, nothing that merited paying for multiple degrees. Nothing steady, nothing full-time, nothing part-time, hell, not even anything that would take me. I was anxious, depressed, and my tear ducts were filing for overtime. At least they had work. Well, let me tell you something. Lyft driver is not the gainful employment you should seek out when you feel like shit about life. <laughs> After about a year of eventful driving for Lyft, I had made so many rules for myself, there weren't a lot of ways left to make any money at it. Where to avoid? Pacific Beach too full of belligerent barfers. What hours to drive? Not morning, not daytime, only happy hour and about 1 to 3 a.m. post-sex time. <laughs> Which Lyft reward and loyalty programs to follow? None of them. They're all lies. <laughs> I had squeezed myself into a corner in the name of safety and sanity. I was heading out at rush hour, coming home late at night, and not making enough money. Any shift came with at least one notable passenger, drunk or otherwise, and the stress of attempting to cope with them. I tried engaging, I tried ignoring. But no matter what you try, you can never control everything, especially the way you feel. A person with anxiety can't keep things at bay the fear will creep in. One day, I picked up a pair of absolutely ripped British women bodybuilders outside of a gym. <laughs> they loved every song on the radio. <laughs> oh, I fucking love this song. Like, turn it up as loud as it can go, love. They belted along to pop songs, putting the windows down and letting their bleached hair flap around in the wind. They asked me to stop at a liquor store, which was always problematic because I didn't get paid for that extra mileage or time and rarely got tipped for it. I sat in the car with one of them while the other went in. I turned the radio down and she asked me to turn it back up. Say something, I'm giving up on you. The windows were still down. I caught sight of her friend inside. Shit, she had grabbed a basket. The one in the car stopped singing. She leaned forward, laid her hand on my arm, and asked, can I tell you something, love? I saw her friend in the store, basket and arms filling up with bottles. Sure. <laughs> I am a clairvoyant. <laughs> Not precisely like clairvoyant, but I see things and feel things from the future. All I could do was nod and say, okay. <laughs> she grasped my arm and said, now I don't want to scare you or piss you off or anything, okay? But I feel like I really need to let you know that if you continue doing this, driving for a job, something terrible and dark <laughs> is going to happen to you. <laughs> so much for taking ownership of my own life. Her friend opened the car door and hopped in, resuming music with the sound of clanging bottles. All right, let's go. They continued to sing, and I dropped them off a couple blocks later. The clairvoyant handed me a $30 cash tip. Remember what? I said. 
Of course I remembered. Even with self-imposed restrictions on my Lyft driving, I still felt darkness creeping in. On a Saturday night, I picked up a distressed 19-year-old college guy. He had just been catfished on Tinder by a pair of two old meth heads posing online as one hot Japanese stud, <laughs> leaving him morose over the state of his love life and horrified over the state of the world. I had a group of passengers one night, all guys who felt it necessary to rate the attractiveness and probable sluttiness of the female friends they'd just left behind. A nice long ride with over cologne undersexed, doughy hate bros sure was a highlight of being my own boss. <laughs> then I had a former Lyft driver as a passenger who told me why he stopped driving for Lyft. His head had the misfortune of being in the way while one of his passengers fired a gun at another passenger. He too advised me to stop driving before something really bad happened. <laughs> then, one night I was in a drive through line to get my passengers food when in my rear view mirror I noticed a man pulling down his pants to urinate on the back of my car. I jumped out, my protection knife in hand, yelling, do it, I fucking dare you. <laughs> I had two passengers in my back seat, watching their driver wave a knife at a half-naked man in the Taco Bell parking lot. <laughs> they did not tip me. So I started driving for Postmates. <laughs> Delivering restaurant orders, groceries, smoothies, whatever. Even though the money was worse, at least I wasn't having to deal with people as much. But I was dealing with myself, and I was more alone with my thoughts. I couldn't keep things at bay. I was driving around, feeling separate, like part of another class. The part that does the answering of the hurry text messages, the heeding of extra ranch requests. You are the bearer of Kentucky Fried Chicken and extraordinary desserts and Panda Express to people in craftsman houses at 10 p.m. And they don't tip. One night I spent more than an hour completing a period run for a woman, sending text messages back and forth with her over which ice cream, tampons, and pain relief she wanted from CVS. When I brought it all to her, she didn't tip, and I made $4. I went back to my car and just sat in the dark, holding onto the wheel, the gear shift, the seat. That was the point where I found it all bubbling terribly. All the lies. Make $25 an hour plus tips. Working anytime will bring in money. Earn as much as you want. You can do anything with an English degree. <laughs> this medicine will improve your mood. You're so pretty, I'll never leave you. That was the last time, I promise. She probably has another year to live, but then ding. My thoughts stopped as I was called to make another delivery. This time, to a sprawling apartment complex. A city on a hill, organized by an illogical, unseen numbering system. <laughs> it had a Cali Moroccan decorating scheme throughout its lavish common areas, and a security team outnumbering the presidents. I picked up Italian food and drove into the complex. It felt like I was in Las Vegas, a complicated fountain Landscape lighting, columns, overwrought fussiness. A guard at a security gate pointed me to a parking garage and gave me directions to a certain elevator bank I'd need to take to get to the correct apartment. I got out at the right floor and found myself in the open air on a Southern California version of a classic piazza. Some of the trappings, but none of the substance. I was surrounded by buildings with no numbers on them. I stood there, as my mom always said, like country come to town, looking like I didn't belong, staring around, trying to figure out heads from tails. I stopped a young guy in a tracksuit and asked him for directions. 
After he pointed me the right way, he said, yeah, this place is a bitch to get around. When I finally found the apartment and put on my smile, a tall guy barely answered the door. He hid behind it. I was extra nice to make up for the time it had taken me. Hi, sorry, it took me a minute to find. He nodded, took the bag from me, saying thank you, and closed the door. I didn't even get to finish my nice spiel, the, ones, the one that translates to please tip me. Maybe he knew I was doing that. As I walked back to the elevator bank, getting turned around a couple times, I noticed that everyone I passed was young. Everyone I passed was in a tracksuit. What the shit was this place? <laughs> was this a cult compound? I smiled and said hi to all of them, but none of them responded. The fear was creeping in. The horrible mixture of panic and sadness. The strong need to get the fuck out. I left. I rushed out, thinking, thank God that's over. As I pulled out of the drive, I realized this apartment complex was right next to USD. It was the luxury home to students of a Catholic college, so I was kind of right about the cult. <laughs> Depression started to poke at me. Those people didn't respond to my greetings because I was invisible to them, just the delivery driver. I was in their brochure-ready apartment complex, but I wasn't sitting by the pool with them, watching the game on any of those huge screen TVs that are all over the terraces. I did not own a tracksuit. <laughs> Thankfully, my thoughts were interrupted. I got another hit from the delivery service. But damned if I didn't get myself called right back there immediately for another restaurant delivery. I was in the mouth of madness. I didn't want to go back, but I had to. For my salary of $4, I had to pick up food, drive back to the complex, park in the garage, find a building, an apartment with no numbers, and wonder the whole time whether or not I'd get a tip, whether or not I'd be able to pay for gas, whether or not I'd get a good rating from the customer and even be able to keep doing the damn job. I drove back to the gate. This time, two different security workers stood there. Their name tags read Brandon and Lisa. I told them I was delivering food. Lisa said, you know what you should do is just leave that here. I'll call them and make them haul their ass down here to pick it up. I can do that, I said. <laughs> Brandon said, eh, well, I think all food is supposed to get delivered to them. I know it'd be nice though. What'd you bring? Nothing exciting, I said. It's a cheese quesadilla and french fries. Brandon made a face. Oh, that's blasphemy, man. Throw that shit out the window. I laughed, genuinely. I was having a relaxed, fun conversation. Lisa asked if the residents of the building tip. I said, not so far, they don't. Lisa said, fuck that. <laughs> she knew. <laughs> I felt calm. I felt like, OK, here's my people. We were a tribe. They hated the system, too. We had some blue-collar camaraderie going on here. We're all workers, working for assholes who don't appreciate us, doing our best to please them. I just wanted to hang out with them all night. Then Lisa continued, you know what it is? It's all the Arabs in the building. <laughs> They're used to not tipping, but it's like, you're in America now, you know? I have no people. <laughs> I blurted, well, I better get this up there. And Brandon gave me directions to the different building I'd be going to. As I made the trek to the apartment, all I could do was have on repeat, be nice, be chipper, be sure she knows about all the extra napkins and ketchup and shit you put in the bag. She had made a special request for ketchup. I finally found the apartment. I heard the laughter coming from the other side of the door. Lots of it. All girls' laughter, high-pitched and happy. I knocked. 
be nice, be chipper, be sure she knows about all the extra napkins and ketchup and shit you put in the bag. Shrieks, ah, food's here, and I heard a smoke alarm begin to go off. More yelps, more laughter, commotion. A girl answered the door. There were several girls inside, all dressed in yoga get-ups. Some were fanning the smoke alarm. One was getting a pizza out of the oven. The one who answered the door said, Katie, your food is here. We can start now. Oh, this isn't her food, I thought. Should I do my spiel anyway? Yes. I'm nice. I'm chipper. I say hi. I say, I put a lot of ketchup and napkins in there, but the smoke alarm was going off and she was nodding at me and closing the door. Shit. She didn't tip me. They looked like they were having a lot of fun. A lot of Gilmore Girls type shit. <laughs> a group of girls doing yoga together and making pizza and getting food delivered and howling with laughter as the smoke alarm went off. I hated them. For, for my feeling envious. As I waited for the elevator, I took a picture of the lanterns in the foyer for my Instagram. I thought about a caption, a place I don't live. I didn't bother posting it, and I hated myself for even taking the photo. I got to my car and drove out of the complex. I slowed down at the security gate for Brandon who sat inside alone, looking at a monitor. I rolled down my window and hollered, bye, have a good night. He turned, looked at me with wide eyes, and didn't respond. I drove on. I didn't know if he wasn't used to people acknowledging him, if he didn't recognize me from just a few minutes ago, or if he did. Either way, it hurt, something terrible and dark. So thank you.